Hey guys, what's up? It's Andy here, uh, back at you with another video. And today I'm gonna show you something quite cool. Uh, it's basically how to track shipments in Google Sheets. Um, it basically works in two steps. I sort of get a, a shipment reference, I select carrier, um, and then I put in the, the tracking number, and then it'll give me the status. You can pull more information than that, but I didn't really need much more than that. And within a few steps, I'm gonna show you all the details in a moment. But within a few steps, uh, a few simple things, you can run a quick API call and it'll update and be like, okay, everything's delivered and this one is still in transit. So for me, that's a massive plus, uh, especially for say international shipments um, and knowing when they've arrived at the warehouse straight away and then I can do the costing or the person in charge can do the costing. So. Yeah, that's that's the purpose of it. Let me let me break it down for you and show you how to build it if you guys want to do the same thing. Right, so to start off, you're gonna to need to get this plugin. Uh, it's called API Connector. If I go here to manage add-ons, give it a second to load up. Here it is, there's a link in the bio as well. Uh, this is one of the most popular API plugins available. Then the next step you need to do is go to a website called TrackTry. And over here you can create an account, uh, tracktry.com, and go into settings. Once you've got the free account, you can track 100 shipments and then it'll give you an API key at the bottom over here, all the way at the bottom of your settings page. So that's going to be, that's where we're going to send our information to, and it's going to hold our shipments there and then you'll be able to pull the tracking from there. So it's like one, you can send in any any tracking number whether it's DHL, FedEx, UPS, you send it in with a, a carrier code and it'll track it and hold it there, uh, which is quite cool. Uh, it's also got other features like sending notifications and whatnot. Anyway, back to the sheet. Obviously you need Google Sheets, create an account, very simple. And you can start off with a sheet like this. So. Um, shipment reference, I put that in, I put in the carrier manually, uh, the carrier code, tracking number is all manual, and then this comes back from the API system. And I've also got another field over here. Right, so this field is, you'll have to type it out with a formula. It's a bit annoying, but that's what we're going to send as our post body and then I've just copied it, it references cells, uh, certain information that we need to put in the post body and that's gonna be sent in. Okay, so lay out your sheet like this and start by getting a list of the carriers, just like this. Uh, all you'll need to do is open up a, or add a new API. So you'd go add-ons, API connector and open and then create, put in your put in this URL, forward slash carriers, uh, content type, application JSON, language English, and then track try, and then just paste in your API key just like that. Obviously this is a get. Then output options. This is where I just set it so it only brings in the name and the code. Uh, you don't have to do this, but Sheets does have certain limitations. That's why I try just um, limited to this, but you can you can just copy this and put it in. It should work fine on your side. Save that and run it, and it'll put out all of your uh, things just like this. You only have to do that once. Then back to or maybe every like six months if you have a new. But shipment companies don't really come and go that much, and they don't they're not going to change these for existing ones. Then we can go back to shipments. And you can just do a VLOOKUP for the carrier to bring back the carrier code. You could probably simplify this in one step and just have the carrier code selected right away, but I think this carrier name looks a little bit better than the carrier code. Anywho, um, in terms of that, then, okay, then we've got to create our posting. So what's gonna happen is, let's just get, I'm just gonna get an, a tester, uh, tracking number. Right, so I've got the tracking number. Uh, I'm gonna put it in 
uh, like that. It is uh, DHL, paste it in there. It's gonna say not found because it's not found it in our current trackings. And first we're gonna to have to send it there. So what I do is I take a query of any of these that still say not found. Um, query and it's got one that we're gonna send. Then I just join them because it might have more than one. It might have, oh, let me just show you this formula. Uh, select uh, where A is not null and E is equal to not found, limit uh, six. I think that's the amount that I can post in one post body. Uh, you guys might have to mod this if you wanted to make it a little bit more scalable. Anyway, then to go to the post body, this is what's gonna get sent, this uh, column A, and you're gonna create a batch in the API, so you'll create a new API, you're gonna call it batch, uh, you're gonna call it batch creations, and this is the URL, trackings batch, copy in this, paste in your own key, and then this is how you reference cells in API connector. So you just start with this, and then plus, 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 post body is this, this sheet, cell A2, cell A2, and it's gonna send this um, in the post body. And output options, you can set it to a, a specific sheet, but there's not much going on here for output items. Actually, I did, uh, I have reduced this a little bit. So it only shows a little bit of the results, which is fine. Uh, save that and run. So that's now gonna go from my shipments. This comes up, but when you automate it uh, with a schedule, you're not gonna see these um, these messages. It did process. Uh, I think it's when it says no records found, I think that's the result. And if we go look at our shipments, nothing should have changed just yet. Should still say not found. Uh, but if we open this and we go to current trackings, this is basically now, so you've sent that tracking number, DHL442 uh, uh, track try. Now we wanna get all of our trackings and the latest uh, tracking status. So get uh, V1 trackings forward slash get, uh, copy all of these, put in your key. And this one, I've really filtered it because I didn't wanna bring in uh, a lot of uh, information. So data item, tracking number, tracking number, status, all of it. So copy this it basically means I'm just gonna bring in, there is a lot more information, like you can have all of the tracking results for every, you know, like checked in here, checked in here, checked in here, in transit, this date, this number, this time. That's way too much information for, for sheets to be bringing in all the time constantly. And it's not the purpose for, for me. So I just wanna see in transit or delivered really. Uh, delivered is the main thing actually. Um, and delivered means a whole bunch of other things can happen at that point. So uh, set that and then you can run that. Uh, let me just save and run that. So it might come back now as in transit. Okay, so if that comes back as pending, it means ship try, track try is still tracking it, but now it's gonna say in transit. Really cool, um, perfect for me. Uh, if I go back to manage requests, last thing you need to do, set up a schedule. Uh, I've got one for current trackings. So let me just show you that. It's gonna bring back, it's gonna run this API every hour, meaning if there's a change in that hour, it's gonna bring it back. And I do wanna create another, uh, sorry, a schedule for posting batch creations every hour and batch creation. That's it, so if, so it does, yeah, basically, here's a log of all your requests, that's just a sideline. Uh, that's my information shipment. So I'll, what I'll do next time, I'll go order, DHL, da, 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 put in the tracking number, and then I'll leave it. By within an hour, it would have posted it, posted it to TrackTry, run it on TrackTry, and then I would be able to pull it. So maybe at most two hours if, if there's a bit of a delay. 
and that's it. So someone else can fill in all of these in incoming international shipments and then I'll just lock this so that only can be changed, um, so that it, it can't be changed by overriding the formula. And then you can always see whether it's been delivered in transit uh, and the default is not found. So if we can't find it, maybe I know there's a problem. Maybe you could put in the date, you could also see the problem. But anyway, I, I rant. Uh, there's a lot of capacity for this. So a lot of my viewers are in South Africa. There's the courier guy, uh, Dawnwing, a lot of like local small couriers. So you could do something for your website, shipping and tracking like that. Uh, maybe if your suppliers are sending goods, you could track it. You could probably also bring in like ETAs from a lot of these companies. They have a, uh, an ETA and TrackTry standardizes a lot of these fields. So if you want to just bring in the ETA from all of them, they go, okay, what's FedEx's ETA? API um, piece of sort of like reference and then they'll map, map that out. So it's all the same. So you can get uh, the ETA from most. And they, they might not be perfect, but for my small scale system, this works perfectly. Only things I'm gonna have to do is delete some shipments as I get close to 100. Uh, I'll probably either go in and just bulk delete because I'll only have four or five international shipments on their way to SA uh, maybe at a time. So yeah, I'm never going to hit that limit. Um, but if you have lots, you might have to delete or just upgrade ship, uh, track try, and then you can have, un I think, unlimited or it's quite reasonable, um, reasonable cost. It's not a very computational heavy thing to do. Um, if you guys enjoyed, enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe and uh, answer each other's questions down below if you can help. And I'll also try to answer some. And until next week, peace.